Northern Ireland 13 Germany not that it was ever in doubt, but Germany will officially have the opportunity to defend its crown as they qualified for the 2018 World Cup in Russia with a 31 victory over Northern Ireland. Sebastian Rudi scored an absolute howitzer from extremely far out just two minutes into the game, and that set the tone as the Germans controlled 74% of the possession to ease their way through. Sandro Wagner struck in the 21st minute and young Josh Kimmich finished things off for the Germans with four minutes left in regulation, while Northern Ireland grabbed a consolation in stoppage time through Charlton striker Josh McGuinness. Germany tops Group C by eight points with still one match remaining, while Northern Ireland has secured the second spot, leaving them likely to make the playoff round on 13 points. England 10 Slovakia Harry Kane continued his blistering form, smashing England into the 2017 World Cup with one swift boot four minutes into stoppage time to give his country a thrilling 10 victory at home. Kyle Walker stole the ball with the visitors switched off as time ran down, and he crossed to his Spurs teammate Kane who beat Meher Mevlia in the box to poke home. The home side was poor at times, holding 67% possession but only putting five shots on target of their 17 attempts on net. The result leaves England six points clear at the top of Group F with one match remaining, locking them into the top spot. Scotland, Slovakia, and Slovenia will now all duke it out for a second-place finish. Scotland 10 Slovakia Scotland picked up an absolutely massive goal as they chase a playoff spot. Derby County striker Chris Martin, a second-half substitute, forced a Martin skirt alone goal in the 89th minute, giving Scotland all three points and putting them in pole position for the second spot in Group F. Slovakia had been playing a man down since the 23rd minute when Robert Mack was sent off for a second yellow, correctly booked for a pathetic dive in the box under no contact. Still, the hosts were unable to grab control of the match, finishing with just 50% of the possession despite the long man advantage. Eventually, the ball came down the right flank and great work by Lee Griffiths to keep play alive despite going to ground allowed Ike Chianya to cross the ball for Martin on the doorstep, and his pressure saw the ball cut off the sliding, skirtle into the back of the net. The win put Scotland into second place in Group F, two points above their opponents Slovakia and three above Slovenia with one match to go. They face Slovenia in the final round and do not have a goal differential advantage, so only a win would ensure them a spot in the playoff round. Armenia 16 Poland Ron Karkatra and Pam Foto via App Poland moved on to the doorstep of automatic qualification as they pummeled Armenia 61. Robert Lewandowski scored a hat-trick and got help from Jakub Blasz Tikowski, Kamil Glick, and Rafal Wolski to pile it on. The win puts Poland three points ahead of Denmark with one to play, although the teams are even on goal differential, so there could be some final day drama should Poland suffer an unlikely slip against Montenegro. Montenegro 0-1 Denmark Denmark kept pace with Poland at the top of Group E, leaving them three points back of the top spot heading into the final day. EWASNT as comfortable as it could have been, but an early Christian. Eriksson who else goal in the 16th minute saw them through. It was a superb goal, if not glittery, as Eriksson was under pressure from three defenders but surprised goalkeeper Daniel Petkovic with the shot as it slid by for the lead and eventual winner. While they're three back of the automatic qualifying spot, Denmark will also be looking over its shoulder, as Montenegro sits three back of them and two back in goal differential, and playing for their World Cup lives in the final game. Azerbaijan 12 Czech Republic San Marino 08 Norway Romania 31 Kazakhstan Malta 11 Lithuania follow at the underscore bonfire New York City is fast-paced. It's one of the social and financial capitals not just in the United States but also on a global scale. For that reason, the congestion associated with the Big Apple has made it difficult for soccer players, both young and old, to find a place to play on a regular basis. More previewing the USMNT's crucial WCQ against Panama hopefully that will change in the near future though, with the help of Soccerroof, a startup company co-founded by Jean-David Tartor and Jerome Miri, as well as general manager Jonathan Lupinelli that aims to bring a wide-ranging group of soccer fanatics the ability to find soccer solace in the concrete jungle. The company is financially backed by several of soccer's most recognizable figures, including Manchester United's Anthony Marshall, Gerard Houllier, global football figure in charge of Red Bull's teams throughout the world and former Paris saint germain owner Patrick Sayer. Soccer Roof is more than a facility, it's a community that brings soccer enthusiasts and players together both online and offline. Soccer Roof will change the way you think, play and experience soccer, reads the mission statement on the company's website.
Soccer Roof's unique blueprint features a number of small-sided soccer fields located on building rooftops, with the first project set to launch in Brooklyn in November or December of this year. Pro Soccer Talk had the opportunity to meet up with several of Soccer Roof's founders and visit the company's first site, which provides an exquisite view of New York City's skyline. Our idea is to provide a high-caliber environment for players from across the city, Miri told PST. There simply aren't a lot of places to go in New York where players can find top venues to play soccer, especially during the winter months. With this project, we hope to provide assistance to those people while also offering a fun environment for adults that could tap into the city's existing nightlife. We want to give easy access for everyone in the area. And we believe we can do that. It's the first really big facility in New York. Soccer Roof Soccer Roof is following in the footsteps of a similar project currently thriving in Europe, the France in particular, previously created by Tartor. The company, La Five, features 22 venues throughout Europe that have focused on providing players of all ages with world-class facilities to participate in small-sided matches while also giving adults the ability to socialize and relax in a mature setting. In addition to the 10 fields throughout the Brooklyn site, the company's first venue will also feature an indoor and outdoor bar area to go along with two decks that overlook Manhattan. We have seen the success of the project in Europe and realize that it's time to help grow the game further here in the U.S., where there is so much potential for soccer's already growing culture, Miri stated. While the group's primary focus is aimed towards helping develop the city's youth players, Soccer Roof also plans to tap into other areas as well, including corporate get-togethers and adult leagues. The company also believes that its backing from Major League Soccer will help further its partnerships with local youth clubs and potentially with the two local professional teams as well, in New York City and the New York Red Bulls. Both Miri and Lupinelli have experience working with the U.S. First Division League and hope that their resources will help with the growth of their new venture. For Lupinelli, he also feels that Soccer Roof has the opportunity to build something unique when it comes to the company's community outreach. I'm really excited to give back in the area and help develop soccer in New York, Lupinelli said. There's obviously tons of interest in soccer and we want to help players reach their full potential. Another way that Soccer Roof plans to enhance the playing experience for players is with the development of the company's web application. The goal of the application is to follow trends already set forth by social media tycoons like Facebook and Twitter in order to connect fellow players and also allow them to track their progress on a Gamito game basis. The app will allow you to track your performance, build your dream team, schedule pickup games, join leagues and ultimately define your own soccer experience, Lupinelli said. The goal for the web app is the gamification of soccer. Players will be able to grade each other and their stats will evolve depending on performance results. It's a little like FIFA the video game in real life. Below is a brief video of how the first complex will be set up. Follower at Madrid Football when the season started, Portland Thorns captain Christine Sinclair said anything less than a championship would be a disappointment. That's because last season's exit in the National Women's Soccer League semi-finals, at home, was a regret that needled the Thorns over the winter and into this season. More previewing the U.S. MNT crucial match against Panama losing in the semi-finals here was disappointing, Sinclair said. But it's things like that that motivate you. Last season, Portland went 12-35 and finished with the league's best record but fell 43 in the semi-finals to the Western New York Flash. The Flash went on to win the NWSL championship before moving to North Carolina as the courage in the offseason. This year the Courage won the Supporters' Shield after finishing the regular season as hopped the standings at 1671. The Thorns 1455 finished second in the 10-team league. The Thorns will host the third-place Orlando Pride 1167 on Saturday in the first playoff semi-final, while the Courage hosts the Chicago Red Stars 1176 on Sunday in Cary. The winners will go on to meet on October 14 at Orlando City Stadium for the final. We're not letting what happened last year happen again, said Portland's Tobin Heath, who recently returned from injury to a loaded lineup that includes fellow U.S. national team regulars Ali Long, Megan Klingenberg and Lindsey Horan. The Thorns also opened the season against the Pride, with Sinclair scoring in a 20 victory. It was the first of a league record 10 wins at home for Portland. But the Pride would go on to get a boost from the return of Alex Morgan, who started the season playing in France, and the chemistry she developed with Brazilian star Marta, a five-time FIFA World Player of the Year. 
There was a bit of trash talking this week between Thorns coach Mark Parsons and Pride coach Tom Samani in advance of the semi-final. Samani fired first, saying he thought referees were intimidated by the big crowds at Portland's Providence Park and favoured the Thorns. Parsons texted him back with a magnifying glass emoji and the words I see you Tommy boy. Portland, which won the inaugural league championship in 2013, has never lost to Orlando, going 301. The pride was hurt when it was revealed this week that Brazilian midfielder Camila is out with an ACL tear in her right knee. The Courage won its first four games and stayed atop the table for almost the rest of the way, led by Lynn Williams, last season's league MVP, with nine goals and five assists. No one has ever won the NWSL Shield and won the championship in the same season, North Carolina coach Paul Riley said. We're 0-3 against Chicago, so we're the underdog, which is great. I don't mind the underdog tag. Chicago, paced by forward Chris and Press with 11 goals, stumbled in August with three losses at home but went undefeated for its final four games. U.S. teammate Julie Ertz had four goals and three assists playing a defensive midfield position. The NWSL is wrapping up its historic fifth season. No other professional women's soccer league in the United States has lasted as long. Sky Blues' Sam Kerr, also a standout on the Australian national team, won the Golden Boot Award with an NWSL record 17 goals this season, including two hat-tricks. Marta had 13 goals and six assists for the Pride. This season was the first that the league has had a national broadcast deal. The Lifetime channel featured an NWSL game each Saturday as part of a deal struck with Air Networks, which bought a stake in league and became a sponsor. Lifetime will televise both semi-finals. Conma Bowl qualifying stole the headlines on Thursday evening, particularly Argentina wide eyes emoji, but the road to Russia continues on Friday around global qualification. More Germany, England reached WC 2018 with UEFA wins in the United States. The primary focus is that the U.S. men's national team pulls out a victory when they play host to Panama, but a win for the Stars and Stripes won't be enough for Bruce Arena and co. to clinch a place in next summer's World Cup just yet. However, a win by Panama and a Honduras loss to Costa Rica would ensure a place for Los Canaleros in Russia. In Europe, three teams have already ensured their place in the competition through qualifying, which excludes hosts Russia being the fourth nation. Serbia and Spain can each top their respective groups if results go in each team's favour, while Croatia and Iceland would set up an intriguing final match day in Group 1 if both teams win on Friday. One match in Africa will take place on Friday, as the Ivory Coast meets Mali. However, a win for Les Elephants won't book their place in Russia until the result of Group C's other match between Morocco and Gabon happens on Saturday. Here's a list of the teams that have already qualified for next summer's tournament. Russia hosts Brazil, Conmebol Iran, AFC Japan, AFC Mexico, CONCACAF Belgium, UEFA South Korea, AFC Saudi Arabia, AFC Germany, UEFA England, UEFA follow at Madrid football There's been plenty of buzz surrounding the US MNT U17 heading into this month's World Cup in India, and now it's time for John Hackwith's side to back up the talk. Star attacker Josh Sargent will lead the US on Friday as the Baby Yanks take on the tournament hosts in. Group A play, and the 17-year-old will look to play a big role for his country ahead of his much-anticipated move to Bundesliga side Werder Bremen in January. More the top talents to watch at this month's U-17 World Cup. Meanwhile, Hackworth has plenty of other options throughout his talented squad, including a trio of Atlanta United Academy players. That includes Andrew Carlton, the speedy winger that has already represented the U.S. at the U-15, U-17 and U-18 levels over the last two years. In Group A, the U.S. will be joined by African power Ghana and Colombia, while Group B features New Zealand, Turkey, Paraguay and Mali. All of the day's matches and the entire competition can be streamed through Telemundo Deportes. Watch every match from the U-17 World Cup in India. Here's the full schedule on match day one as Groups A and B begin play. Group A Colombia vs. Ghana, 730 a.m. ET India vs. USMNTU 17s, 10.30 a.m. ET Group B New Zealand vs. Turkey, 7.30 a.m. ET Paraguay vs. Mali, 10.30 a.m. ET Follower at Madrid Football, 